Hi, Kranti. Uh, yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. How are you? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yeah, <laughs> you are audible. All right. Okay, so we'll continue with the provisions, all right, where we left yesterday. And today will be one hour class, all right. So, okay, so you Hello? have your... Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So yesterday, did you see the document that I shared? The introduction? Oh, yeah, 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 I know what is it now. Okay, okay. So yesterday's class, was that part clear? Hello, is it coming fine, my voice? Yeah. Maybe a connection problem. Connection problem, is it? Um, uh -huh, your connection problem. Okay. I can hear you fine. Is it better now? Hello? Yeah, is it not coming? Hello? Uh, now it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, continue. Okay. okay, okay. It's fine, right? Yes. All right, all right. So yesterday's part, is that part clear? Yesterday, did you see the document that I shared for contracts? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, sure. So this one I have not shared because after completing the elements, I will be sharing it, okay? When we complete the entire provision, then we'll be sharing this. So yesterday we discussed about offer and acceptance, right? Yes. That this is the first element that I need to tell you about what I want to do, then only you will come to know about it and you can give your acceptance, right? So first yes. element that we have is offer and acceptance. Second one that we have is intention to create legal relation or consideration, all right? So we'll see what is intention to create legal relation or consideration in detail in yeah. today's class. So when I share this document, you can go through the cases also and recall what all we discussed from this part. Yeah. First one. All right. So this is intention to create legal relationship. That means when there is a contract, right? It should not be a random promise that I'm making to you, right? That I will go out for morning walk every single day with you. There, mm -hmm. I don't have the intention of binding myself under any kind of legal obligation. It's just a random promise that I made to you. So that should not be the case with contracts. Then I should have the intention of creating a legal relation, right? I should know that I am making myself bound under law when I'm making this kind of a promise. So that thing should be there. That is intention to create legal relation or consideration in other ways. Huh. So, okay. I, yeah, we will see one case that will help us understand what is intention to create legal relation, all right? So, it's okay. the case of Belfort versus Belfort. Again, it's a very famous case that you will see everywhere, all right? It's Belfort versus mm -hmm. Belfort. So, when we see the name, right, it's a surname, Belfort versus Belfort, same surname. That means it's husband and wife, mm -hmm. all right? So, this case is filed yeah, by... Yeah, yeah, yeah against her husband. And this case is relating to intention to create legal relation makes a promise contract. That means when there is a promise, plus there is intention hmm. to create legal relation, only then it leads to formation of a contract, otherwise not. Okay. All right, so in this case, what happened basically, Belfer, hmm. Mr. Belfer and Mrs. Belfer, they were a couple from hmm. uh, Sri Lanka, all right? So they decided to visit England just for holiday, all right? So both the husband and yeah. wife, Mr. and Mrs. Belfer, went to England for a holiday. Mm -hmm. But during mm -hmm. that time, right, during their holiday, when they were spending time there, Mrs. Belfer fell sick. So visited the doctor, okay. and doctor said that it will take a little while for you to recover, and the climate of Sri Lanka is not good for this, uh, you know, like illness that you have developed. 
So maybe you should consider staying in England for a few days, get your treatment done, and once you are fine, you can again return back to Sri Lanka. All right. So during this time mm -hmm. of treatment, you stay here only in England, get the treatment done, then you can go to Sri Lanka back. But obviously, they visited England for a limited time frame, like it was just a holiday that they went there. So yeah. Mr. Yeah, Belfer, yeah. Mr. Belfer had to return to Sri Lanka because of his work, right? He will have to join his Thank work you. and other thing. So he, they made some sort of, a, you know, like understanding between them that, okay, fine, you stay here, Mrs. Belfer, you stay here. I will be going to Sri Lanka. And during this time, right, whatever duration of time you stay in England, I will be sending you some money, okay, monthly basis, I will be sending you some amount so that you can do all the treatment and other expenses that you need to make so that you can do that. So there was this understanding or agreement between both of them. And based on that, Mr. Belfer left to Sri Lanka, okay. So after yeah. reaching Sri Lanka, he was sending money to his wife, okay, reg on a regular basis. Monthly, he was sending that. But at a later stage, there were some, you know, like the relation went to a different aspect, like things were not that fine amongst both of them. And it, you know, like reached a point of divorce. All right. So at that point of time, um, like Mr. Belfer stopped sending money to his wife, that monthly money, whatever they agreed, he stopped sending that. And Mrs. Belfer filed a case saying that her husband made a promise to give her monthly this much amount. So he is bound to provide that amount to her. All right. So yeah, then after uh, yeah. divorce or judicial separation, whatever the case was, he is still bound because he made a promise. So in this case, yeah. The matter was relating to intention to create legal relation. All right. So what was held in this case basically is that there can be a lot of different promises or arrangements made between a husband and wife. But that does not mean that both the parties want to make themselves legally bound. All right. So it's... Uh -huh. There can be a promise between husband and wife, but they are not having the intention of legally binding each other. So even though Mr. Belfer agreed to pay a certain amount every single month, it was a promise made between husband and wife. And that promise cannot be enforced once they get divorced or judicially separated or something like that. Why? Because it was just a random promise made between husband and wife, no intention to legally bind themselves, right? So that was the case, uh, what was held in this case. So you can re relate to this, right? In normal day-to-day -day life examples, also you can relate. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a mm -hmm. husband and wife where they have maybe divided the work in the house, right? That you do the cleaning, I will do the cooking. But that does not mean that after divorce yes. also, she can expect that you come and clean my house and you go. That cannot be expected, right? So similar is this yes. case also that there can be a lot of different arrangements, agreements, all things between a husband and wife, but there we do not have the intention of legally binding ourselves, right? So that will not be applicable after that relation gets over or things like that, right? So, or there can be any other promises also, right? The wife can say that, okay, fine, uh, you always drop me to work. Her husband, she can say, but their legal obligation is not there, right? Husband can drop her if he wants. If not, he will say that I don't feel like dropping you today, right? There is no intention to create legal relations. So that is what it is. So for contracts, we would need the intention of creating a legal obligation also, which is called as consideration that law would recognize, right? Law should recognize it as a valid consideration, only then we can make it binding. So you can remember yes. this case, all right? Belfer versus Belfer, a couple from Sri Lanka yeah. went to you, uh, England for a holiday. England. Yeah, they promised to pay 30 yeah. euros for the expenses. Later on, he refused. So... As there was no intention to create legal relationship on part of either parties, it was not enforceable, right? Court did not ask the parties that you pay this maintenance even after judicial separation or divorce. You are not bound to do that. All right. So yes. now we will see what is consideration. All right. So consideration is defined under section 2D of the Indian contract. Act. What is consideration? This definition is when at the desire of the promiser. Who is promiser? If I am making the promise, I am the promiser. So when 
at the yes. desire of the promiser that means at my desire or at my wish all right mm. the promisee or any other person that means you or mm. anyone on your behalf all right has done mm. or yeah. abstain from doing or does or abstains mm. from doing or promises to do or abstain from doing something such act mm. or abstinence is called a promise or uh, called consideration for the promise that means mm. if i am making a proposal to you at my wish or at my desire you will do something or you will promise not to do something that can be present past or future also take for example mm. you can say that okay fine uh you can say that okay fine i'm supplying you these materials you pay for it at a later point that means you are doing it right now you are doing it consideration i should be giving at a later stage or it may be i'm going to buy some vegetables i need to make the payment immediately and buy those vegetables or it can be to do something in future you are ordering something online from amazon you are making a promise to uh, pay cash on delivery right that's the promise that in future when you receive the item you will give it so it can be past present as well as future all right but it should be at my yes. desire while making the offer i am telling you yes. to buy this dress you need to pay 1000 rupees plus 100 rupees delivery charges right so at my wish or at my yes. desire you have agreed that you will be paying that and you will be receiving the dress so that is consideration dress is yes. consideration for you yes. and 1100 rupees is consideration for me all right so it's not essential yes. that it has to be always in terms of money it can be in any other form also like dress is consideration for you it may be some sort of a comfort maybe you are buying an ac right that the comfort that you will be getting by using the ac that's consideration for you or you are repairing your ac the yes. comfort that you will be getting that's consideration so consideration can be anything but it should be something that has value in eyes of law all right and it should be that yes. at the desire of the person who is making the promise right i am willing okay. something else you are doing something at your own wish you cannot do at my desire you should be doing that that is consideration right and it can yeah. be something that is done by you or someone on your behalf also okay if you want to mm -hmm. buy a two wheeler okay you want to buy a two wheeler maybe you don't have money to spend on it maybe your parents can buy that for you right in that case consideration you are getting right you will be the one who will be using the two wheeler but you are not paying for it right your parents can also pay for it that means consideration can come <coughs> from a third party as well all right yeah, yeah. so that is what consideration is yeah. basically whatever you are getting in return and it should be something that court recognizes yeah. to be having value now okay, okay. so this is the definition okay try to remember it it's very important definition of consideration under section d right. so consideration is a vital element in law yeah. of contract consideration is the benefit which must mm. be bargained for between the parties as an essential re as it is an essential reason for parties right you should get something out of a contract right otherwise why will you be interested in performing your obligation right you will expect something mm. in return whatever you expect in return that only is consideration all right if you are going to uh, you know like if you are going to maybe some get some sort of a service okay maybe you want to get a hair cut done what is consideration you are getting something in return right that is the reason why you are going to a parlor getting a hair cut that that is consideration something yes. you are getting out of it as a return Mm -hmm. now nature of consideration all right there are few things that we should know regarding consideration first is it must not be in the past past as in you can say that okay fine a we make right like prepaid recharge we do right that is what today i am recharging at a later stage i will be making a phone call that is valid but must not be in past as in it should not be something that i have done without your consent without your approval and that i am saying that that is a consideration okay that should not happen take for example i'll give you one situation mm -hmm. okay take for example well, like mm -hmm. i was walking on the road i saw one person he met with an accident and he was severely injured and he was just 
lying there no one was there to help him okay so out of humanity what mm -hmm. i did is i took him to the nearby hospital i got him admitted done everything got the treatment done and everything all right whatever i did right the yeah. person did not request me or he did not promise anything in return i did it out of humanity i saved yes. that person's life all right at a later stage yes. when yes. the person recovers i cannot say that i saved your life that day so you give your two wheeler to me for free yes. i cannot say that why because consideration must not be in the past yes. i cannot bring something yes. that i have done in the past and say that that is consideration now you yeah. do this for me right because consent is not there right yes. the person never agreed that i will be giving my two wheeler to you for free if you save my life he never did that so it mm -hmm. must not be in the past it has to be after having consent of both the parties right so that is the reason why it must not be in the past is it clear hmm yes yes Okay. So next one is must have value in eyes of law. Obviously, we know, right? If you invite just one mm -hmm. friend of yours for your birthday, and at the last moment he just says that I cannot come for your birthday party, you cannot go to court and say that you know, like it's very, you know, like uh, it's very difficult for me that on my birthday he just refused to come for dinner. it may be a big thing for you that on your birthday you had to have dinner alone it may be a very big thing for you but for court it will not be a big thing right court would not recognize that right yes. so it must yes. have value in the eyes of law maybe you were planning to go out for morning walk for a very long time then a friend said that i will be joining you so you were waiting for your friend for one month then friend refuses those things may mean a lot to you but for court it will not have any value right so it must have value in the eyes of law it must be something that law would invest their time on right so that is what the second one is next one is it must be sufficient and not adequate so you want to explain what is it must be sufficient and may not be adequate what can this point be uh it should not be uh, to your wants uh, like it should be your necessity but not to your wants um not like necessity see it must be sufficient sufficient as in it must be sufficient for both the parties right it must be sufficient for me that okay fine for this i can do it all right but it may not be adequate take for example you have a plot of land all right you are owner of a plot of land maybe market value of that plot of land is 50 lakhs rupees all right but at uh, a given, so hello yeah. ma'am yeah uh, i i think get uh, that uh, third point must be sufficient and not adequate actually i got a call that's why yeah yeah okay so must be sufficient hmm. and not adequate take for example you are owner of a land which is worth 50 lakhs like market value is 50 lakhs all right Hmm. so market value is something that minimum you should be getting only uh, and above that also you can go so 50 lakhs is the market value that means you should get at least 50 lakhs rupees for that plot of land but at any given point of time you had urgency of money you somehow needed 10 lakhs rupees at any cost within one day so you decided to sell that 50 lakhs rupees ka plot for 10 lakhs rupees only so in that case it is what consideration is sufficient for you to make the contract but considering market value of the plot it's not adequate right you should have got more than that but whatever you have received you are okay with it right you are okay to sell your property for that amount and other party is also okay paying you 10 lakhs rupees so that is what it is huh. that it can be that you are getting less but court would not say that how come you have entered this contract you are getting less court would not come and say right if you have a mobile yeah. phone worth 20000 rupees you can sell it for 100 rupees also court is not going to come and ask a question if parties are satisfied with it yeah. right so consideration is should yes. be sufficient for both the parties to perform their obligations but it may not be adequate in every single case all right it may be sometimes very less it may be sometimes very low 
but sometimes very high or it may be sometimes the exact amount. Court has nothing to do with it unless and until parties are satisfied and okay with it, right? So parties should be, it should be sufficient for them. It may not be adequate in every single case. <laughs> Next one is must okay. move from promisee to the promise. So that means if I am making an offer to you, consideration should come from you to me, right? It should come from you to me. Whatever I have asked you, you will do that for me, right? It's basically like between the parties, they will make an agreement and it can come on your behalf. Yeah. Someone else can also do, all right? So this is about the nature of consideration. Okay. Okay. Is it clear? Nature of consideration? Yes. yes. Okay. Next yes. one is what is not consideration? There are few things which are not consideration, like existing contractual duty. There is already a contract between you and me, and we already have some existing duties, right? Out of all those existing duties, I cannot pick up one and say that this is consideration. Now you do this for me. Take, for example, uh, one person is having a house help, all huh. right? Take, for example, you are having a house huh. help and you have clearly told your house help that your job responsibilities, responsibilities are that you need to do whatever is needed for welfare of the family members, okay? You need to feed them, you feed them, you need to clean, do whatever is needed for welfare of the family members. All right, so you have this house help. At the same time, you also have a cook who will cook food for the family members, all right? Just because you have a cook, your house yeah. help is not cooking food at your house, all right? If one day the cook is okay. absent, yeah. you can ask your house help to cook food hmm. for the family members, right? Cook cannot, uh, your house help cannot say yeah. that, you pay me extra because I'm cooking food for the family. Why? Because cook is anyways, house help is anyways supposed to do whatever is needed for welfare of the family, right? And cooking food is anyways part of the yes. job of house help, right? So that is what is existing contractual duty. House help was anyways expected mm -hmm. to cook food, but just because you were having a cook as well, she wasn't cooking, right? So if any day you are asking her to cook food for the family, she cannot demand extra money for that. Yeah. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, yes. But take, for example, you have, a, you have a driver and a cook, all right? One day your cook yeah. was absent and you are asking your driver to cook for the family. In that case, your driver can yeah. say that I'm a driver. I'm not supposed to cook food for your family. Yeah. If you want me to yeah. cook food, you pay me extra. He can say that. Why? Because mm -hmm. that was not an existing contractual duty that the driver was having. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. But maybe you can ask your driver to clean the car also to take the car for servicing. Those no. are existing contractual duty. That is the main difference, all right? What is existing contractual duty? Yes. So an existing no. contractual no. duty cannot be consideration. Mm -hmm. okay. Second thing is an existing public duty. What is existing public duty? Take for example, there is a government department and certain persons are there who are working in that department those people have certain duties towards the public. That is what is existing public duty. Take for example, you are going to the district transport office or regional transport office for issuance of your driving license or registration certificate or permit extract, right? So RTO is already having a responsibility that if you are passing the driving test, if you are submitting all the valid and genuine documents, he or she should issue a driving license to you. So he or she cannot say that. Hello? Yeah. Huh. Is it audible? Hello? Ha, it was just breaking in between. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. audible. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, it's audible, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
So RTO cannot say that, okay, fine, I will be issuing you driving license, but you pay me 5,000 rupees extra. Why? Because it's already a duty of the RTO to issue a driving license. If there is some fees or some charges that you will have to pay, but otherwise just for issuing the driving license, he cannot take bribe from you. Is it yes. audible? Yeah. So same happens with yeah. pass passport also, right? If you are applying for passport, whatever charges you need to pay to apply for the passport, that you will have to pay. But other than that, passport officer cannot say that I am issuing this passport, so you give me 10,000 rupees. He cannot say that. Why? Because it's already an existing public duty that he is having, and he is paid for that, right? So he cannot ask extra money from you because it is coming under existing public duty. All right, so these two yes. things are something that is not con that will not be a consideration. Yes. Okay, now there is a case relating to privity of consideration. So there are two concepts, all right, privity of contract and privity of consideration. Okay, so privity of contract means when there is a contract between you and me, only we. Ma'am, your voice is breaking. All right, what is the issue today? I don't understand. Is it breaking now also? Voice is breaking. Yes, it is breaking now also. Okay, but I should not have a network issue. Your network is working fine, is it? I think it's issue from your end because I just finished a class few minutes back. It was working fine. Uh, is it coming now? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So there are two concepts, all right, called as privity of contract and privity of consideration. Okay, this is also very important. Okay. So what is privity mm -hmm. of contract? Privity of contract basically means if there is a contract between you and me, okay? There is a contract between mm -hmm. you and me, it's only we both who can go to court to enforce the contract. Some third party cannot mm -hmm. come and say that, why mm -hmm. are you not performing the contract and go to court and file a case? That is what privity of contract. That means privity of contract is not allowed. Some third party is not allowed to go to court and file a case. Yeah. Okay, but privity of consideration yes. is allowed. That means if there is a contract between you and me where you want to buy a two-wheeler and you don't have money, your parents can pay money on your behalf. That means privity of consideration is allowed. Some third party can provide consideration in a contract, but some third party cannot file a case for violation of the contract. Okay, yeah. All right, so that is the difference. Privity of contract basically means some third party cannot file a case for enforcement of contract, but privity of consideration is allowed. Some third party can file, a, you know, like can provide consideration in any huh. given contract. So this case is relating to privity of consideration. Chinnaya versus Ramaya. All right. So yeah. in this case, what happened basically is that there are three persons involved. Lakshmi Rani, Ramaya, and Chinnaya. Hmm. So Lakshmi yeah. Rani is an old lady who is having a property and she wants to gift her property. All right. She wants to transfer her property by way of gift to her daughter. Huh. So Ramaya is daughter of Lakshmi Rani. That means there is one mother, an old lady with a property. There is one daughter called Ramaya to whom property hmm. is gifted, and there is one a uh, woman called Chinnaya, who is Lakshmi Rani's sister and aunt of Ramaya, all right? So there is one uh, yes. old lady, her sister and her daughter, all right? So mm. old lady wants to gift her property to the daughter, but aunt is mm. not having any place to stay or anything. So 
mother mm -hmm. says that I will be gifting my property to you, but you will have to make a promise that every single year you will be paying rupees six hundred and fifty three to your aunt. All right, as a way of you know, like annually, annually you will have to pay this amount. Only if you agree to that, I will be gifting my property to you. Okay. Okay, so daughter also agreed that okay, fine. I will be giving this amount annually to you know, like my aunt. You give the property to me. So property was gifted for one or two years. She was paying that annuity amount of six hundred and fifty three rupees, but later on she mm -hmm. just refused. She said, okay. "Why should I pay my aunt? Right? Because I am not getting any consideration from my aunt. I am not getting anything out of paying this amount to my aunt." It's my mother who gifted my prop the property to me. So it's a contract between me and my mother, right? Aunt is a third person. Why should I be giving maintenance to her? I will not pay this amount. So accordingly, case was filed, hmm. and aunt said that I should be getting this amount. So court also said that in India, privity of consideration is allowed. Some third party can also give consideration. And this contract will be valid. Why? Because you accepted the gift, right? You accepted the property. Mm -hmm. On on what mm -hmm. condition did you accept? You accepted it on the condition that you will be paying annually six hundred and fifty three rupees to the aunt, right? So you will have to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. It cannot be like there is one contract. Mm -hmm. You are accepting part of it. Where you are getting benefit, and another part you are not accepting. Where you are not getting any benefits, right? It should not be like that. You should accept the entire contract if you are accepting. If not, you can refuse it. So consideration in India can move from a third party, right? Here consideration moved from the mother to the daughter, and who was getting benefit? Aunt was getting benefit. So that is allowed in India. Privity of contract is not allowed. But privity of consideration is allowed. Okay. Is it clear this case? Yes. So you can even refer this case in case a question comes with regard to privity of consideration and contract, right? It's a case of the year eighteen hundred and eighty-two, Chennai versus Ramaya, a very famous case with regard to contract. Yeah. So this is what it is: privity of consideration and privity of contract. Privity of contract is not allowed in India, but privity of consideration is allowed in India. Yes. So there is something called as exceptions to the rule of privity of contract. That means some third party is not allowed to file a case. Okay, but there are some exceptions. In some cases, it is allowed. What are these cases? First okay. is trust. First is trust. What is trust? Someone is working from some for someone else's benefit. So if a trust is established and they should be working for benefit of a certain person, right, group of person, and they are not doing it, then those beneficiaries can file a case. Take for example, there is a contract between you and me where we are making a trust. Okay, I am giving you a piece of. land and i am saying that you should work there as a trustee for the benefit of uh, you know like school dropouts who left school in 6th or 7th standard you should work for their benefit you also agree so the contract is between you and me you were working there for one or two years but after that you just stopped working for them and you started enjoying the property yourself Hmm. All, right. all right so even though the contract was just between you and me those beneficiaries can file a case against you that means those school dropouts of class 6 and 7 can file a case against you claiming that this property was donated for our benefit you should work for hmm. our benefit and not for your personal interest yeah So that means okay. it's a privity of contract, right? Because beneficiaries were not even yes. a part of the contract. Contract was between you and me, mm -hmm. but just because they were beneficiaries, mm -hmm. they can file a case against you. Okay. Okay. Next one is relating to marriage settlement, partition, or other family arrangement. Take for example, there is like one father is there. Okay, he is having like a big property. All right, he is having a big mm -hmm. property. and there are three brothers and one sister 
Okay. All right. They want to divide yeah. the property. So these three brothers want to divide the property amongst them, themselves, right? They want to divide it into three parts and take the property, right? Divide it amongst themselves. But they also thought that, okay, fine, we are having an unmarried sister. So for our sister's marriage, we, sh we should keep some amount. So we will sell this small portion of the property, whatever amount we are getting out of it, that amount we will use for our sister's marriage. All right, they made huh. that kind of an agreement. So sister okay. was not huh. part of this division, right? It was divided between the three brothers only. But sister yeah. can file a case because it was there was a provision regarding marriage settlement, right? Regarding her marriage, hmm. they wanted to sell some amount of the property and get money and then do the all the things for the marriage, right? So in that case, even though sister is a third party, privity of contract will not be applicable here. Sister can file a case against the brother saying that while making the contract, you promise to keep this amount for my marriage, this portion for my marriage. Now you are not doing it. So you should do it. She can go to court and file a case accordingly. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, yes. So these are the rules regarding privity of contract. And there is the last one, which is acknowledgement, right? What is acknowledgement? Take, for example, uh, you are going for some kind of internship, okay? Yeah. During yeah. internship, what you do is you basically work for someone else, right? But mostly it's unpaid. You don't get paid for what you do. If stipend is not there, you don't get paid for your service. Take, for example, you are going to the Karnataka State Human Rights Commission for internship after your first semester, all right? And yeah. they are make, making you do a lot of things. During this one month duration, they are asking you that you do this, prepare this, prepare that. And you have done a great work there. And they are really impressed with your work, all right? And they said that, okay, fine. Usually we don't provide stipend to our interns, but because you have done so much, you have done so well, we will be providing you 3000 rupees stipend. All right. In that case, yeah. they will be liable to pay 3000 rupees to you. Why? Because otherwise they were not liable, but just because they acknowledged. Acknowledge that we will be paying you 3000 because we are so impressed with your service. Because of that acknowledgement, only they are liable. So same thing may happen. Take, for example, you are working in a company where you should work for nine hours. And if the work is not over, you can work for 12, 15 hours also. All right? Huh. Basically, you should finish your work no matter how many hours you are working. On a certain day, hmm. you were working 15 hours to complete a task. And owner of the company comes to you and says that because you have put so much of effort in finishing this work, we will be paying you 5,000 rupees extra. In that case, he will be liable to pay 5,000 rupees extra just because he acknowledged that he will be paying. Otherwise, he was not bound because anyways, you had yes. to finish your work no matter what. But just because he acknowledged, hmm. he will have to pay. Yeah. All right. So these are the three exceptions where you know, like privity of contract will not be applicable, right? That without consideration also, you should be, uh, and you know, like made to perform your part. All right? Yes, ma'am. What does estoppel mean? Same only, like uh, once you have accepted something, right? Later on, you cannot again come back from there. If I have accepted okay. that I will be paying stipend, even though usually we don't, I cannot again step back from that. I will have to per do that. <clears throat> Yeah. So we know that consideration is very much needed for formation of a valid contract, right? Without consideration, there cannot be a valid contract. Yes. But there are certain, again, exceptions. Okay, exceptions are like part and partial of all the laws that we have, right? So again, yes. there are some exceptions with regard to consideration also. So. Take, for example, there is a contract made out of natural love and affection between close family members. That contract will be binding even though consideration is not there. Like, I mm, take, for example, a, a mother makes a promise to her daughter that 
I love you so much that I will be gifting my property to you. All right. If it is just something that is like spoken words, that is not binding. But if mother also agrees to that on a gift agreement with signed, sealed and everything, mother will have to follow that. That means out of natural love and affection, mother is gifting her property to the daughter without having any consideration. Mother is not getting yes. any benefit, right? It's not hmm. like she is paying for it, right? Mother is not getting benefit, yeah. but even then it will be a valid contract. Why? Because it's hmm. a contract made out of natural love and affection and it's registered and properly sealed. So that is like an exception yeah. where without consideration also it will be the next is voluntary service. So same thing is applicable. What I told you, right? That you are working somewhere as an intern. They are impressed with your work. They promise to pay you stipend. That is one. Or you are employee of a certain organization. You are giving, you are working more than your, uh, you know, like usual working time. They promise you to pay extra. That also will be applicable. You voluntarily went there to do the internship without expecting anything you went there to work but they promised to pay you some amount of stipend so they are liable so that is what is called as voluntary service okay okay and last one is time barred theft so we know there is something called as limitation act under which there is a limitation fixed during which we should go to court file a case all right so if there is yeah. a time bar debt, that means you have taken some amount of money from me. You should return mm -hmm. it within the promised date. If not, I should file a case within three years. If I am not able to file the case within three years, that means limitation mm -hmm. time is over. Then it becomes a time bar debt. All right. So mm -hmm. you are no more liable to pay that time bar debt. But even in that case, you acknowledge that, okay, fine, I will be paying that amount to you, even though legally I'm no more entitled to pay, liable to pay, I will still pay that to you. In that case also, it will be a valid contract, right? Even though it was not an obligation on your part, you simply agreed to pay, you should pay. It. So in case of time bar debt also, that's an exception where without consideration, it is applicable or it's a valid contract. Okay. Is this part clear regarding consideration? Yes, yes. Any doubts from this part? No. Okay. So we have completed the second part, all right, regarding consideration. So these questions yeah. are not important for you. Next is competency of parties. All hmm. right. So parties should be competent, and competency of parties is provided under section 11 of the legislation. Right. So who are competent to contract, enter into a contract? First is a major person. Okay. So who is a major person? Under Indian Contract Act, it says that the person should be a major person. Right. Yes. So for major person, we should refer to Indian Majority Act, where it says person above the 18 years of age, right? 18 or above 18. Yes. So that same thing will yes. be applicable here also that a person should be 18 or above 18 years of age of hmm. sound mind. So is it like an uh, unsound mind person can never make a contract? Or they uh, can in some cases? No, no they can have uh, their guardians means uh, in case they are only there to make a contract, but they will have some guardian for them. Okay, so in case of person of unsound mind, what happens is there can be a person who is like a person of unsound mind only, right? He never gains his, uh, you know, like reasoning ability, all right? In that case, that person is not entitled to make a contract, but there can be a person who occasionally gets attack of insanity, right? He, maybe he is under some sort of medication, so Usually he is of unsound mind, but occasionally he gains his, you know, like senses back. Or maybe a person is there who is usually of sound mind, but occasionally he gets attack of insanity, right? In such cases, what happens? Those persons can make a contract, but while they were having their senses at that point of time only, 
they are able to give their consent right so they should okay. prove it in court that while i gave consent to this particular contract i was having consciousness of mind i was able to understand to what i am agreeing Uh-huh. All right. So, person should yeah. be of sound mind, but it does not matter if a person occasionally gets attack of insanity or occasionally mm-hmm. he gains his uh, senses back. It's fine. While giving consent, he should be of sound mind. That's all that we need. Okay. Okay. Next one is not disqualified from contracting by any law to which he is subject. So, what is this point? not disqualified from contracting by any law to which he is subject that means there can be different other laws which are applicable to us under hmm. those laws we should not be disqualified from making the type of contract that we want to make it can be take for example after completing llb right we cannot immediately start practicing right yes we cannot immediately start practicing we will have to appear for bar council exam we will have to clear it we will have to get our license only then we can start practicing as an advocate right so take for example there is a law regarding that that you should have a valid license only then you can start practicing as an advocate that is like a law right so that means yes. before you hmm. obtain your yeah. license you cannot make a contract with a client and say that i will be helping you with this legal matter you pay me 10000 rupees you cannot say that hmm. why because under hmm. this law of bar council yeah. of india you are disqualified from making such a contract with a client why because you are not even an advocate hmm. by that time right so that is what it is that under some yeah. sort of a law you are not disqualified all right okay maybe to open yeah. maybe to open alcohol shop right i need to obtain some permission okay i need to obtain some permission so before i have obtained those permissions i cannot make a contract with you that i will be supplying you this this variety of alcohol every single month i cannot do that why because i have not yet obtained the permission from the concerned department or bodies right yes so this is what it is under some law that is applicable to me i am disqualified from making this kind of a contract so that also will make me not entitled right to make a contract okay. so for this try to remember the section also it's section 11 that talks about three different categories or three different conditions which we need to satisfy first is majority second is soundness of mind and second day we should not be otherwise disqualified from making such kind of a contract so these are the three conditions which we need to satisfy yeah all right so we should yeah. be a major person right what happens in case a minor enters into a contract okay what yeah. happens there contract with minors are called as void of initio that means they are void from the very beginning they never existed only from the time it was made from that time only it's void right so contract yes. with minor is void of initio hmm okay so we will see two cases relating to contract with minor yes all right so okay so there was this case of mohri bb versus dharmodas ghosh which is a a uh, case relating to contract with minor even after having knowledge knowledge as in knowledge that the other person is a minor all right huh. so in yeah. this case what happened is there was one person who is a minor all right he is dharmodas ghosh who is a minor there is one person called brahmo dat who is a money lender he will give money and he will take some amount of interest when you repay the amount he was having another employee called kedarnath who was an agent of brahmodar basically he was an employee of brahmodar who will help brahmodar in all the dealings that he will do hmm then there was a person called mohri bibi who is wife of brahmodar wife of this money lender okay so in this case what happened is brahmodar was sole owner of an immovable property right the miner was owner of an immovable property he was owner of a piece of land 
and because he was a minor his mother was given custody of that property that until your son becomes major yeah. you are having custody of the property like legal custodian yeah so what minor did is that he approached that money lender and he took a loan for of 20000 rupees and he promised that i will be paying 12% interest and i am mortgaging my property right just as a security i am mortgaging my property and i am taking this loan from you all right huh. so out of this 20000 one installment that is 10500 rupees was paid to dharmodas ghosh mm -hmm. and for the remaining uh, amount they signed on a piece of paper that it will be paid to them all right mm -hmm. so during yeah. this time what happened is mother came to know that right? mother of this minor came to know about the transaction and she wrote a letter to the money lender that my son is a minor and this agreement is not valid all right this agreement right. that you have made is not valid so money lender okay. said that it's fine all right if the contract is not valid you return the amount that you have taken right you return this 10500 rupees to me and i will release the you know like property the contract will be over but mother okay. did not allow you know like agree to return that 10500 rupees also and she also said that the agreement is not valid that means contract with minor is void of any issue so contract is not valid but we are also not returning the benefit which we have taken okay. all right so huh. when this case huh. went to lower court and then it went to you know like uh, it moved to high court so during this time what happened the money lender died so this case was filed by his wife and it is known as mohari bibi versus dharmodas khos so wife of this money lender versus the minor wife filed the case against the minor that you should return this amount to us all uh -huh. right so in this case court held that you entered into the contract with this minor even after knowing that he is a minor right so huh. when yeah. you know that you cannot make a contract with minor why did you make this contract so you hmm. are not entitled to get back this amount so this 10500 rupees you are not entitled to get back the amount because you knew that you are entering into a contract with minor even then you went forward right so you are not entitled yeah. in this uh -huh. case it was not given why because contract with minor is void of initio right they are void yeah. from the very beginning yeah clear okay. right that case And, yeah yeah and the uh, what happens if uh, he becomes major and then uh, uh, will he uh, be supposed to pay in that period of time suppose if he got major the minor turned it, 18 plus it does not matter whether in, during the case he becomes major or not we are considering what was the status of the person when he gave his consent right in case of yeah. insanity also we are seeing when he gave consent whether he was sane or insane right so it matters whether while giving the consent he was major or minor later on he becomes major not major those things we are not considering right when we are saying minority okay. while giving consent was he of 18 or 18 plus or not okay all right otherwise the contract will be void of any show okay now there is one more case all right relating to minority so in the previous case we saw the person knew that i am entering into a contract with minor even then he went forward he was not granted any relief right hmm. but now this is a case which is complete opposite to the other one so this case is khangul versus lakha singh it's a case decided by lahore high court how is it different here contract with minor but without knowledge right without knowledge that other person is a minor or the minor misrepresented himself to be a major person right he just did not disclose his age so what happened in this case is again there was a minor who was owner of a property all right and there was a major person all right so minor wanted to sell his property to this major person and he misrepresented his age and he said that i want to sell this property to you for 17500 rupees all right hmm. both of them agreed 
and the purchaser also paid eight thousand rupees advance. All right, he paid eight thousand yeah. rupees and said that remaining thing I am paying you. Okay, he made an agreement and everything. He said I will be paying you the remaining amount. But after yeah. taking the money, what miner did is that he refused to deliver property. He said that. Okay, fine. I have taken money from you, but I am a minor. Mm -hmm. I am not, you know, like supposed to perform the contract. So I will not deliver my property to you. I will not give possession. I will not return your money. Also, all right? Yeah. Why? Because I am a minor. So when this mm -hmm. case went to court, court felt that it's very bad that we are straight away saying that contract with minor will be void of initial. They are not entitled mm. to return the benefit also. They are not entitled to perform mm. the contract also. We cannot just say like that, right? Why? Because mm. we cannot allow one person to take undue advantage or unfair privilege, right? Yeah. You know, like unfairly, we cannot allow one person to become rich or to gain benefits and the other person hmm. will be losing right so in this case yeah. it was said that because the minor misrepresented his age right and the other hmm. person was not having any knowledge that he is dealing with a contract with a minor right he just thought hmm. that maybe it's a major person only with whom i am uh, you know like making a contract so what court held is that the minor can be compelled to return the advantages and benefits received under void contract. That means, fine, contract is not valid, that is fine. But whatever mm. money you have taken, right, whatever advance amount mm. you have taken, that you should return. You cannot just mm. gain benefit out of it. You cannot just misrepresent yourself and then gain unfair privilege or advantage over it. Okay. All right, is it clear? Mm. Yes. These are two questions with regard to minor. So for minority, right? I have seen lot many questions being asked. So if there is any question, uh, you can mention these cases as well. Okay, then just remember names are also very simple, right? Mohri Bibi versus Tarmodas Kosh, Hangul versus Ra Lakha Singh. You can just remember difference is that in one case they were not knowing it's a minor, in another minor misrepresented himself. So. There are questions also that you can see with regard to minority, right? Yeah. So minors agreement is void of an issue. Explain with the help of decided cases, right? When they are saying decided cases, you can mention that in this case, this happened. In this case, that happened. Yeah. So that means, hmm. yes, minors agreement is void of an issue, but we cannot just say, uh, it will be the same in every single case, but court will also see, you know, like justice and fairness also will see. One person cannot, uh, you know, like take unfair advantage or unfair benefit. Mm -hmm. There is something called as unjust enrichment. Um, let's see, I just search for it. Okay, and, and this is the thing. So unjust enrichment, right? That is what it is. That one person is a minor. He, that cannot hmm. be something that he is using to unjust enrichment, right? That he is using that as a benefit to, you know, like gain profits from other people. That yeah. should not hmm. be allowed, right? So whenever yeah. there is such kind of a contract where minor is trying to misuse his advantage or privilege, at that point of time, we should make the minor liable. But otherwise, contract with minor will be void of an issue. Yeah. So in this case, if take, for example, this question comes, a minor's agreement is void of an issue. So you can write that, okay, it's section 11 that talks about capacity of parties, that party should be major. Major as in under Indian majority, and they should have attained 18 or 18 plus years of age. Otherwise, the person is not entitled to make a valid contract. So con minor's agreement is void of an issue. But in a lot many cases we have seen is that minor is trying to make misuse of his age. So what happened in this case? What happened in that case? Accordingly, you can frame the answer uh -huh. and, uh, you know, like write it. Yes. Next consideration also we discussed, right? So there are questions with regard to consideration as well. So define 
Okay, explain the provisions relating to legality of object and consider. This is a different one. Consideration should be. I think we have one more question regarding consideration. Define consideration somewhere I saw. Yeah, define consideration and explain, uh, you know, like uh, explain with regard to that. So there you can explain whatever you know with regard to consideration and mention that it's section 2D of Indian Contract Act that makes provision. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. So is this part clear, whatever we discussed today? Yes, yes, yes. And it was not so important. I don't know. And at the end, I also sent two key points. Your voice is breaking actually. At the end, you will summarize. Huh, I'll uh, give, I'm making key points on these answers. So okay. I will uh, ask you yeah, if uh, any question I'm not sure about. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You can do that. Okay. So yeah, you can go through these questions also and then accordingly try to, you know, like prepare notes based on the key points. So yes. fine, then yes. uh, fine, then we will continue with the remaining provisions. All right, in next class. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay you. then, thank you.